Hey guys and welcome to Hara Gastro. Today we will be going over abdominal hernias. So let's get started. So what is a hernia? Coming from the word hernia, the word herniate means to protrude through an abnormal body opening. And an abdominal hernia occurs when an organ inside of the abdomen, which is usually the small bowel or the small intestine, pushes through or protrudes through an opening in the abdominal muscle tissue that holds it in place. So you can see here on the picture on the left, here is the intestine, which is normally found within the abdominal cavity, and it pushes through or it protrudes through this layer of abdominal muscle and fatty tissue. And this is what it looks like on sagittal view. So how do hernias occur? The most common location for a hernia is the abdomen. The abdominal wall, a sheet of tough muscle and tendon that runs down from the ribs to the legs at the groins, acts as nature's corset. Its function, amongst other things, is to hold together the abdominal contents, principally the intestines. If any spots of weakness should occur in that wall, then the corset effect is lost and what pushes against it from the inside will be the loops of the intestines. The ensuing bulge, which is often quite visible against the skin, is the hernia. So again, here is the sections of the abdominal wall in this picture right here. And this is a corset, right? It keeps everything together in its place from the outside. So this is the abdominal wall, which usually acts as the corset. And from the anterior view, you can see here at the bottom, this is the abdominal wall layers again, and the intestines are kept within the abdominal cavity. So when we do have a hernia, these intestines from this layer here are protruding through these layers here. Common locations. The protrusion of the intestine through the area of weakness in the abdominal wall can also be called a window of weakness. There are a few common areas of natural weakness in our abdominal wall, and these act as perfect spots for intestinal protrusion, which is in fact hernia development. Examples of these are the canals, such as the inguinal and femoral canal, which allow for the passage of vessels down to the scrotum and the legs, respectively. The umbilical area, which is the navel area, is another area of natural weakness frequently prone to herniation. Another area of potential weakness can be the site or sites of any previous abdominal surgery and these hernias, if they do develop, are called incisional hernias. So incision basically means to make a cut. So this is where the surgeon has entered the abdomen and this is actually a very weak spot for hernia development. Uh, we also have the umbilical hernia which develops around the umbilicus and we could have an inguinal hernia which develops near the inguinal canal. So now let's go over some specific types of hernias. Inguinal hernias. Inguinal hernias appear in the crease of the groin or in the scrotum. They are more common amongst men. There are two types, direct and indirect, depending on exactly where the hernia occurs. The direct inguinal hernia enters through a weak point in the fascia of the abdominal wall and its sac is noted to be medial to the inferior epigastric vessels. Direct inguinal hernias may occur in males or females but males are 10 times more likely to get a direct inguinal hernia. An indirect inguinal hernia results from the failure of the embryonic closure of the deep inguinal ring after the testicle has passed through it. Like other inguinal hernias, it protrudes through the superficial inguinal ring. It is the most common cause of groin hernia. Inguinal hernias can also occur in children. So this is what a indirect inguinal hernia looks like. And this is the type of hernia that results from the failure of the embryonic closure of the deep inguinal ring after the testicles has passed through it. So you can see here it's protrusion through the inguinal canal. And here is the direct inguinal hernia. And in this hernia we have its outpouch or its protrusion which is found medial 
so it's found more midline uh, than the inferior epigastric vessels and that's how we tell the difference between the two of them. Umbilical hernias. The umbilical hernias occur around the navel or the umbilicus. Many babies have a small umbilical hernia because the opening for the umbilical cord blood vessels did not close completely. In younger children, doctors sometimes monitor umbilical hernias to see whether they close on their own. Some adults may develop an umbilical hernia because of obesity, pregnancy, or excess fluid in the abdomen, which is called ascites. Femoral hernias. A hernia may develop just below the crease of the groin in the middle of the thigh, where the femoral artery and vein leave the abdomen to go into the leg. This type of hernia is more common amongst women and is called a femoral hernia. Okay, so as you can see in the picture above, here is the abdominal crease which ends, right? And here is the hernia just below that crease and it's in the middle of the thigh. And this is the point where the femoral artery and vein actually leave the abdomen and pass into a canal to go to the leg or the lower limb. And you can see here in that area where the artery and vein are supposed to leave through that canal, we have the small intestine which has protruded through. And this is called a femoral hernia. Incisional hernias. Sometimes hernias form through a surgical incision in the abdominal wall. This type of hernia is called an incisional hernia and it may develop many years after surgery. So as we discussed earlier, if the patient has undergone a previous surgery and has made an incision through that abdominal wall, this is actually going to act as a point of weakness. And those intestines are going to want to protrude through that point. And this is actually what an incisional hernia looks like. And something to note that I haven't really mentioned is all these hernias, they don't develop through the skin. So they will be found under the skin, not through the skin. So what are some signs and symptoms of abdominal hernias? Most people usually notice only a bulge at the site of the hernia. Sometimes a hernia appears only when the patient lifts a heavy object, coughs or strains himself. There is usually little or no discomfort and the bulge can often be pushed back in, which means that the hernia can be reduced. The patient can also experience swelling or fullness at the hernia site an aching sensation which radiates into the area of the hernia and the hernia may enlarge when intra-abdominal pressure is increased or the patient stands up. Now we're going to discuss some complications that patients with abdominal hernias may experience. Incarcerated hernias. Sometimes a loop of the intestine becomes stuck or trapped in the hernia, a condition called incarceration. An incarcerated hernia can block or obstruct the intestine. If you look down at the picture below, you can see that the piece of the intestine, the small intestine, is now become trapped, right? So it's very tightly squeezed itself in there and it can't find its way back out. And the normal job of the intestine is to push the food along the GI tract as well as absorb all the nutrients, vitamins, fats, carbohydrates, proteins, etc. So what's going to happen if this little piece of intestine has gotten stuck here? That process is not going to occur in that piece of intestine anymore. So it's going to cause an obstruction. So suddenly that motion of the food going through this little tube is going to come to a sudden halt. And so from that point backward, we're going to have a buildup of food. So the patient is going to feel some kind of bloating now because we're going to have that stoppage of the food so the food cannot pass through that tract anymore and it's impossible to pass so the food is going to get built up in the abdominal cavity some signs and symptoms of an incarcerated hernia include the hernia cannot be manipulated either spontaneously or manually through the fascial defect so it cannot be reduced or pushed back the patient can experience nausea and vomiting and symptoms of a bowel obstruction. Another complication that patients with abdominal hernias may experience is a strangulation of their hernia. 
And this basically means when the hernia traps the intestine so tightly that it cuts off all blood supply. And this is a condition called strangulation. So you can imagine that these intestine have to be supplied with blood in order for it to do its job. It needs energy, it needs vital source of nutrients to be able to, to do its job, which is to absorb nutrients and to pass the food along the GI tract. But if its blood supply at a point has now been cut off because a piece of this intestine has been stuck so tightly here that blood vessels aren't even able to deliver blood here, this is going to cause quite a problem indeed. And some signs and symptoms of strangulated hernias include strangulated hernias can cause steady, gradually increasing pain. I'm sure if that tissue is undergoing necrosis, which is cellular death, the cells need vital oxygen and nutrients to survive. And if that is cut off, they're going to die. So the cells that are found in this systemic toxicity may develop secondary to the ischemic bowel. So this slide actually follows the slide before and now we're going to talk about the complication of the strangulated hernias. With strangulation, the trapped piece of intestine can develop gangrene, which is basically necrosis or cell death, uh, in as few as six hours. And with gangrene, the intestinal wall dies and usually causing a rupture, which leads to peritonitis, which is the inflammation and usually the infection of the abdominal cavity and shock and death may develop if this is untreated. So as I mentioned in the slide before, this area of ischemic bowel needs to be operated on and removed as soon as possible because it's now prone to the development of peritonitis, shock, and the patient may die due to this portion of ischemia or cell death that has occurred in the abdomen. So what actually happens is these patients require an emergency surgery and which that portion of the ischemic bowel or the dead uh, small intestine is removed and the healthy pieces of the intestine are sutured together and everything seems to be okay once the procedure is done. The diagnosis of hernias. So how are abdominal hernias diagnosed? A physical examination by the doctor is often enough to diagnose a hernia. Ultrasound may be used to see a femoral hernia and abdominal x-rays may be ordered to determine if a bowel obstruction is present. Lumps in the groin that resemble hernias may be swollen lymph nodes or undescended testes. A swelling in the scrotum may be a varicocele, which is a condition in which the veins that carry blood from the testes widen, or a spermatocele, a cyst in a sac that develops next to the coil tube where the sperm are stored until they mature, which is the epididymis. Sometimes the doctor does ultrasound or computed tomography, which is a CT, to help differentiate whether a hernia is present or the lump is being caused by a different pathology. So basically, all that means is usually a normal physical examination is enough to diagnose a hernia. But sometimes this becomes tricky because it's found in a spot which is a common spot for the development of other diseases. So a CT ultrasound or an abdominal x-ray may be required to differentiate between whether it's an actual abdominal hernia or whether that lump is due to a different pathology. What are the treatments of abdominal hernias? In babies, umbilical hernias may heal themselves within four years, making surgery unnecessary. For all others, the standard treatment is conventional hernia repair surgery called a hernia raffi. It is possible to simply live with a hernia and monitor it. So usually the medical advice is if the hernia is small and not producing many symptoms to the patient, no real treatment is necessary. But if the hernia is larger or causes many symptoms, there is a surgical approach that can be taken to reduce these hernias. And this is called the conventional hernia repair surgery or Hernioraphy. And basically all that's done is in the surgery is the hernia sac is pushed back into the abdomen where it belongs and the site where the weakness occurred is sutured up, it's tied up so that the intestine won't have 
that tendency to want to escape the abdominal cavity again through these layers. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you found the presentation very informative. Please like, comment, subscribe and share. And if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Thanks again. See you soon. Bye-bye.